And now shifting focus to South America, thousands of anti-government protesters marched through the streets toward the presidential palace in Venezuela's capital, Caracas, on Monday. This after incumbent President Nicolas Maduro was declared the winner of Sunday's presidential election. Maduro's re-election has come under massive scrutiny, with the opposition alleging fraud in the counting of votes. On Monday, at least one person died and 46 people were arrested as security forces tried to disperse the demonstrators. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets on the furious protesters who challenged the victory claimed by Maduro. In fact, some of them even ripped Maduro campaign posters from lampposts and set them on fire. Meanwhile, at least two statues of Maduro's mentor and predecessor Hugo Chavez were toppled in the country. I'll fight for my country's democracy. They stole from us because he is genocidal. We must fight for democracy in this country. We need to keep on fighting for the young people, the youth and my grandchildren and my children who left this country. They left. Yes, we are tired. I have 23 years living under the same government and it has always been the same. No, that's enough. I want a future for my daughter. I have not been able to study. I got out of high school and I could not go to college because I had to work. Now, calling his re-election fair, Maduro says he knows how to handle the anti-government protesters. We have been following all of the acts of violence promoted by the extreme right. I can tell the people of Venezuela that if they have done harm, we are acting. We already know this movie, so once more, along with the civil, military and police union we are acting. We already know how they operate. We have witnessed a group of violent events. Right now I could show you 100 videos of violent attacks, we could label them criminal and terrorist. Public anger swelled after the National Electoral Council of Venezuela formally gave Maduro a third term in office and extended his Socialist Party's 25-year rule. The polling body said Maduro won 51 percent of the vote, while his main opponent Edmundo Gonzalez secured 44 percent of the vote. However, the opposition called the results fraudulent and said Gonzalez gained over 70 percent of the vote. I want to tell the entire Venezuelan people, with total responsibility, that we will enforce respect for the will expressed yesterday through your votes. This is the only path to peace. We have in our hands the tallies that demonstrate our categorical and mathematically irreversible victory. I believe it is relevant to say that in these 73 percent of tallies, the votes that they include are more than 2 million for Nicolas Maduro and over 6 million for Edmundo González Arrutia. Meanwhile, Venezuela's electoral body, which is controlled by Maduro's loyalists, haven't released tallies from all of the 30,000 polling stations. Along with Venezuelans, several countries, including the United States, as well as international bodies, such as the United Nations, have called on the Venezuelan authorities to release the results of individual polling stations. The Secretary General calls for complete transparency and encourages the timely publication of the election results and a breakdown by polling stations. The Secretary General trusts that all electoral disputes will be addressed and resolved peacefully and calls on all Venezuelan political leaders and their supporters for moderation. He recalls that electoral authorities should undertake their work independently and without interference to guarantee the free expression of the will of the electorate. Meanwhile, Argentinian President Javier Malay has refused to recognize Maduro's victory, and in response, Caracas has recalled its diplomats from Buenos Aires. This is a message for the heroic Venezuelan people. The fraud that the dictator Nicolas Maduro has carried out and perpetrated is nothing more nor less than a worthless victory. He may have won a battle. He may believe he has won a battle. However, the most important thing is that the Venezuelan lions woke up, and sooner or later, socialism will end. This impoverishing model is going to end because socialism is always and everywhere a murderous, starving, and impoverishing phenomenon. Cheer up, dear Venezuelans, you will succeed. Keep fighting, don't give up. Long live freedom. And now several other nations in the Americas, including Costa Rica, Ecuador, 
Guatemala, Panama, and Peru have all expressed concerns about the Venezuelan election. Now, as the re-elected Maduro faces criticism both domestically and globally, it remains to be seen what he does next to quell the rising protests. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative.